All right, let's just jump right in because this is a big one. It's the question that keeps pretty much every Proxmox admin up at night. Ceph, ZFS, or a good old-fashioned NAS for high availability. They all promise you this magical system that never goes down. But wow, the path to get there is filled with some serious gotchas. And let's just say some very strong opinions. And hey, if you've ever found yourself just standing there, staring at your server rack with that sinking feeling in your gut, wondering if your whole storage setup is basically a ticking time bomb, yeah, you're not alone. Not by a long shot. This is the central challenge when you're trying to build a Proxmox cluster that won't let you down. So here's the game plan for this explainer. We're gonna slice through all the marketing hype and just get real. We'll start with what everyone's chasing, that high availability dream. Then we'll put the three big players head to head, Ceph, ZFS, and NAS. After that, we'll uncover the real villain of this story, the thing that trips up almost everyone. And finally, we'll give you a simple, no-nonsense way to figure out which path is right for you. Okay, first things first. Let's talk about the goal itself, high availability. It's this quest for the holy grail, right? A system so tough, so resilient, that a hard drive dying or even a whole server going offline is, well, it's just not a big deal. It's a system that just keeps on chugging along, no matter what you throw at it. But here's the catch. In the Proxmox world, that dream, it lives or dies by your storage strategy. It's not about finding some magic piece of software. It's about making a really smart, really deliberate choice between three very different ways of doing things. So, let's meet our first contender. Let's start with the 800-pound gorilla in the room, Ceph. It is the undisputed king of distributed storage, the poster child for the whole hyper-converged movement. It's powerful, it's slick, and is baked right into Proxmox. And listen, when Ceph is set up the way it's supposed to be, it is an absolute thing of beauty. It's wicked fast, it literally heals itself when drives fail, and it is tough as nails. You can manage the whole thing right from the Proxmox interface. For a lot of folks, it really does just work. But, and this is a huge but, here is the most important thing you need to understand, and this quote from a user online just says it all. Ceph itself is almost never the problem. It's the way people try to use it that causes all the headaches and the chaos. And this really gets to the core of it. Ceph is built for one thing, true hyperconvergence. That means your compute and your storage all live together across three or more nodes that are pretty similar. The biggest pitfall? People trying to make one giant storage beast node that's a recipe for absolute disaster. Ceph is also hungry for network speed. We're talking 25 gigabit ethernet or faster, seriously. And whatever you do, do not use SMR drives. Their terrible write performance will bring your entire cluster to its knees. Okay, on to our second option. Let's talk about ZFS. It might not have the flashy marketing that Ceph does, but man, it has an army of loyal fans for one very, very good reason. And that reason is just simplicity. ZFS paired with replication just plain works. Now it's not true instant high availability, okay? Let's be clear. But for smaller setups, it gets you like 95% of the way there. A node dies, you've got a couple minutes of downtime while things fail over, and then poof, you're back online running from a replica. For a lot of people, that's a trade-off they are more than happy to make. And this quote just hits the nail on the head. It's the honest truth for most of us, right? As one admin pointed out, we have a tendency to way over-engineer our setups for an amount of uptime we don't actually need. ZFS is the perfect sweet spot of good enough reliability without all the mind-bending complexity. So to sum it up, ZFS is absolutely perfect for smaller clusters, think two to five nodes, where you just want something that's easy to set up and manage. You get amazing local disk speed and killer features like snapshots built right in. The main trade-off, of course, is that small bit of downtime during a failover. And yeah, once you start getting past five nodes or so, trying to manage all those replication jobs can start to feel like a full-time job. And finally, let's talk about the old guard, the classic approach, using a dedicated NAS. This is the way things were done for years. And you know what? For some people, it's still a totally valid choice. I mean, if you've been in IT for any length of time, you know the setup. You've got a pair of redundant controller heads hooked up to a big shelf of drives, and it's just serving up storage over the network to your Proxmox nodes. If you have a rock-solid, enterprise-grade NAS that's built for HA, this can absolutely give you that high availability you're looking for on the storage side. But, and you knew there was a but coming, here is the massive catch, especially if you're playing in the open source or home lab world. Real, true, automatic failover high availability is usually locked behind a very expensive proprietary paywall. 
If you try to roll your own, you're going to find yourself neck deep in weird scripts and wrestling with the quirks of the underlying system. It is not for the faint of heart. So a mass really only makes sense in two scenarios. One, you already have some reliable dual controller hardware, or two, you just really prefer to keep your storage and your compute completely separate. The big downside though, you can kiss all those amazing benefits of hyperconvergence goodbye, and your network can very quickly become a massive performance bottleneck. So we've looked at Ceph, ZFS, and NOS, but honestly, the whole debate between them, it completely misses the much bigger, much more important problem. It misses the elephant that's quietly sitting in every server room. What is the one single thing that connects nearly every horror story you've ever read online about a Proxmox cluster that just fell apart? It doesn't matter if they were using Ceph, ZFS, or anything else. What's the common thread? It's misconfigured hardware. That's it. It's people trying to force the technology to work on a setup it was never, ever designed for. It's buying the wrong kind of drives, using a network that's way too slow, or accidentally building single points of failure while you're chasing this stream of perfect redundancy. You know, one database admin online put it, well, a little more bluntly. He said that sometimes HA stands for something else entirely. And you know what? He's not wrong. The fanciest, most expensive technology on the planet cannot save you from a fundamentally flawed design. Okay, so with that brutal bit of honesty out of the way, how do we actually move forward? How do you pick the right path for your setup right now? Let's build a super simple framework to make this easy. Look. This table basically turns this whole complicated decision into a simple checklist. Just look at your own situation. Are you running three or more nodes that are pretty similar and you have that fast 25 gig plus networking? Your answer is Ceph. Do you have a smaller cluster, maybe just two or three nodes, and you care more about simplicity than you do about zero downtime? ZFS is your best friend. Or do you already own a solid dual controller NAS and you like keeping things separate? Then just stick with that. It's all about matching the right tool to the job you actually have. So, at the end of the day, the big takeaway is this. The best HA strategy has nothing to do with what's cool or what's new. It's about being brutally honest about your needs, your budget, and what you're actually capable of managing. Don't build the system for the architecture you wish you had. Build for the one that is sitting in your rack right now. And that really just leaves us with one final question to think about. I want you to take a hard, honest look at your cluster. Is it truly built for high availability? Is it built to be simple to maintain? Or is it some over-engineered monster that's just waiting to blow up and wake you with a panic call at 3 o'clock in the morning? The choice, my friend, is yours.